A very good evening and welcome to our weekly look at the issues affecting lives in all parts of Wales and the people making the decisions. And we start this week with the dangers posed by one popular drug to control epilepsy. Those dangers apply to pregnant women, many of whom seem to be unaware that the drug in question, called Epilim, can be linked to severe abnormalities in babies and developmental problems. Well, the Wales report has discovered that a lack of consistency in epilepsy treatment across Wales is making things worse, as Helen Callaghan explains. He may be a computer whiz, but life is sometimes a struggle for Thomas Cousins and a real battle for his mum Jo. Thomas from Caerphilly is autistic, a condition which has been difficult for his family to manage since he was small. Tom has had problems from an early age, feeding, he can't do things like blowing through his nose, social interaction. He doesn't know by looking at somebody whether they're happy or sad. So in a group situation that can be extremely difficult. Jo was diagnosed with epilepsy in her teens and given the drug Epilim. She continued to take it in her 20s and throughout her pregnancy. Although it was known at the time that using the drug during pregnancy could cause serious abnormalities in the unborn baby, Jo says she was never warned. This is what it looks like now. Nobody had pointed out to me any risks at all when I first started taking the Epilim when I was 17. If somebody was to read all those abnormalities out to me when I went to see the specialist, there's no chance I would never have taken those tablets. And recently, Jo discovered new research that revealed that babies who've been exposed to Epilim are more likely to develop autism, Thomas's condition. Jo was utterly shattered. As a mother, you do anything in your power um, for your child and I was completely torn apart, devastated to think that something I put in my mouth had caused my son Tom to suffer in the way he suffered over the years. The research that shocked Joe was a six-year study of the effects of Epilim, the brand name for sodium valproate. Our research has suggested that all children exposed to sodium valproate are likely to experience a, uh, a deterioration in their intellectual functioning. If your child was exposed to sodium valproate, that's a nine-fold increase of, of a risk of uh, autism spectrum disorder. Concerns were first raised about the use of Epilim during pregnancy more than 15 years ago. So many are asking, how can it be that some women taking the drug today still aren't aware of some of the potential side effects? Well, according to one leading charity, the warnings on the packaging and from doctors simply aren't getting through. And we asked all women of childbearing age with epilepsy what information they've received about their own epilepsy medication and how that impacts on pregnancy. Almost half have never been given information about how their epilepsy and their anti-epileptic drug could impact on the health of an unborn baby. And one leading clinician thinks that information isn't getting to patients, partly because there aren't enough doctors and support services across Wales. Services are underprovided for with epilepsy. We need more neurologists, we need more specialists with an interest in epilepsy. And we need more awareness and involvement in epilepsy in primary care. So we need increases in resources really from both aspects. Indeed, Sanofi, the manufacturer of Epilim, told us they do advise women to speak to their doctor to see if the benefits of use outweigh the risks to the unborn child. They also point out that the information on the packaging is up to date. And everyone has stressed to the Wales report that suddenly stopping the drug could lead to recurrent seizures. So alternative treatments have to be carefully planned with a doctor. Campaigners say there's an urgent need to raise awareness about the drug. They want to make sure that it's never given out as a first choice treatment for epilepsy in women of childbearing age. 
and they want much more information to be given out to all of us. Um, Epilepsy Action would like to see some kind of review so that we find out why women haven't received this information on a national level. Only once we've done a review and we find out why women haven't been told before and aren't hearing can we actually correct the problem. Joe and Thomas live with the consequences of autism every day and now Joe's demanding action. It's time that the government look at it and, and say well we need a public inquiry and I want justice not just for Tom, I want justice for all the children out there that have been affected by this drug. Only then, Joe believes, will women taking the drug in future get the informed choice that she was never given. Well, that was Helen Callaghan reporting there. Lots for us to discuss. I'm joined by the Labour MP for Newport West, Paul Flynn, who is uh, campaigning on this and raising the issue in Parliament too. Paul, thanks for coming in. Um, very strong report and raising some very serious questions. These mothers have been betrayed uh, by governments and by the drug companies. And it's a question of the worries being apparent, the drug companies denying the seriousness of the threat, and then research from independent people coming out saying the threat is an overwhelming one. And of course no mother in, would, would want to take such a drug if they were properly informed, but they weren't. They were denied the knowledge. And even worse than that, when they took up a case uh, against government to seek some kind of redress, uh, their legal aid was stopped. And when we hear that Abu Qatada has had a half a million pound in legal aid, I mean, it's utter disgrace that these parents were denied a proper voice and denied any kind of uh, redress. But we must make it clear now that the warnings must go out. Let's be clear. The company has said all along that the warnings about potential risks have been there. It is for doctors and other people to give appropriate advice to pregnant women. And it is, it is in that context that this problem must be seen. Do you not think that's a credible explanation? No, it's not. The plight of these, uh, these mothers is a dreadful one because they tend to blame themselves. Whatever it is, it's nothing to do with the mothers. They took the advice of the doctors. And I'm afraid the, the failure was of the, the medical system and the drug companies to fail to live up their responsibility. When you raise this in Parliament, what are you going to be saying? Uh, I'm going to say that we must go back to the basics of having a regulatory system that's independent, uh, that's based on science and not based on the, uh, the greed of pharmaceutical companies because it's a, it's a long history, it goes back a long time, where we've minimised the effect of drugs. We've got a, a terrible record where we've been far too permissive in allowing the drug companies uh, to pursue their commercial interests at the expense of, uh, of patients. And the, the cases involved here are heartbreaking ones of uh, brain damage among young children, children who won't live beyond 10 years of age. Why? Uh, because their mothers were advised to take a drug uh, that produced these results. Ultimately, there's a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And the Welsh Government in Cardiff saying that this is actually not a devolved area, no. that this, as you say, is, is a matter that's not yet been devolved. Where for you is the responsibility? Oh, the responsibility is uh, with government. Government should have uh, set up a regulatory body that was entirely independent. They have one in Italy. And we must uh, take advantage, of course, of some of the miraculous uh, benefits of, of the drugs that are available, but be aware of the dangers. And the, we should be leaning to the side of caution rather than leaning on the area of the, the commercial needs of the companies who don't want to see a, a bad reputation acquired uh, by their drugs. Paul, good to talk to you and thanks for coming in. Paul Flynn.